Well, we just had a panel on elections and political parties. And I think both institutions, if we prefer to call them that, are institutions that people feel on the one hand we can't live without them, but we can't live with them. People are very frustrated in many countries, both with elections and parties, and so they're really deep questions about how much they're reformable. We had kind of two different answers in the panel. There was some emphasis that elections are reformable, electoral systems can be modified in some real ways that can make a difference. On the other hand, when it comes to reform of parties, it's harder to point to examples of parties that have really, or party systems in countries that have really reformed. And Philippe Schmetter was a bit extreme, but he, in his view, you know, parties are dying. So then we discussed a very important question of whether social movements, new movement parties, are really the answer to party reform, but there was a bit of a cautionary note in that regard as to whether movements, once they become parties, end up acting like parties. I think it's that uh, reformism doesn't command a lot of excitement, <clears throat> but ultimately we have to not give up on reformism. That, you know, democracy, we could say, needs a crisis or a revolutionary moment or movement. But in most cases where those have been occurring, they haven't been very pretty. Um, and so we really need to get serious about reformism and find ways to really make some progress. You know, I've been studying democracy for a long time in many countries, and one thing I always say is uh, studying political change teaches you not to make predictions. Well, I think most of us who do have some experience in trying to reach out to young people on political issues, we're, we're always struck by a two-edged sword. On the one hand, once you engage 16-year-olds in a classroom about, you know, some basic political issues, they're always remarkably responsive, they want to engage, they have fascinating discussions. And you can do that and stimulate that, but then connecting that to an organized process by which they take such experiences and then connect them to you know, uh, regular political participation is, is much more difficult. So on the one hand, you can go and meet with a group of students in a secondary school and have, you know, and really see the potential in them to question the world, to approach major political issues and grapple with them. And then you think, but that's not enough. You know, and somehow they're not gonna take that most of them at least, and connect it to a sense of my vote matters or I really need to engage with political institutions in this way. And so I certainly think debate programs are vital and I think it's been a very good thing to support, which the Open Society Foundations has supported many countries, as have others. So I think it's, it's definitely part of the answer, but it, there's obviously more that needs to take place.